Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. It is that time of the year again and this is my entry into the 2018 NYX Professional Makeup Face Awards. I'm very excited to just give this another shot. I really wanted to create something absolutely crazy and just go all out for this. As you can see, this is a full face prosthetic and even neck prosthetic as well, Mermaid. She was meant to be a siren but worked out way too pretty so I just left her as she was in her glittery form. I hope you enjoy this video and I really hope it gets me through to the top 30. If you would like to see how to create this, then please keep on watching. Jumping straight in, I'm going to show you how I created these scales. This is the first part of what is a long prep tutorial. Starting out, I'm using a tile as a working surface. That was like $2 from a hardware store, super affordable. And then going in with a lightweight oil-based clay, and that doesn't dry, so you can pretty much always mold it whenever you like. I'm going to cut out a section that I need and roll it out about one centimeter thick onto a board. This is the size that I need roughly to fill up all of my neck and chest and arms and forehead area. I'm taking this little sculpting tool that you can get from the dollar store, but I also did a few test runs with like the back of a brush and all of that sort of stuff as well. Even a spatula works quite fine. It's really important not to dig too deep and too far down, otherwise you won't be able to lay your next layer of scales because there won't be enough clay there. I quickly sculpted that out because I wasn't sure how this was going to go, but it ended up working perfect, so this was my final mould. I pretty much filled that immediately with liquid latex and let it dry overnight, making sure with a q-tip that the edges were nice and thin, so we had something to blend out. As you guys can see, this is it dry, it kind of sunk into itself a little bit, and I used a lot of baby powder, you can also use talcum powder, translucent, whatever you have, and that's going to help it peel out and not stick to itself. The scales are pretty much perfect. I mean, by the time you paint them and add glitter and all that, they're going to look super duper fancy. So as I said, lightweight, great blendable edges, and they're super flexible. For my forehead scales, I created a whole separate prosthetic. This is going to be more curved and designed specifically for the face, just to make it more flattering. It starts with larger scales along the top, tapering down nicely into smaller ones. I used two different sculpting tools and then recast this multiple times just so I had plenty of all of the prosthetics and it gave me more options and pretty much like a safety blanket so if anything stuffed up I had plenty of backups happening. Now that we have the scales prepped we can move on to the actual face prosthetic. I'm taking lots of liquid latex and thickening that with just regular plain flour. This is like baking flour but you can use baby powder and things like that as well. I'm going in a tablespoon at a time and mixing it until it gets nice and smooth. I like to work with very, very thick consistency, but it's really up to the artist how thick you like to go. I will be building this up on a face cast today just so it fits my face perfectly. A mannequin head is also a really super cheap alternative. Taking a few craft tools and I also use my fingers and regular thin latex to start smoothing this out. This process took me hours, but I'm just going to quickly show you some clips of me running through the main areas, really building up those cheekbones and the brow bone area, kind of making a base for all of the things that we're going to be applying. I wanted to have a really prominent forehead with scales and some really big gills under some massive cheeks. So as you can see here, I'm just going ahead and sculpting it out. After you apply the really thick latex down, you can pop lots of thin layers on top and really just smoothen it out with your skin. So even if you had a slightly lumpy mix, you don't need to worry because it will work out in the end. I popped the ears on just so I could get the proportions right. And then with these scales that I have pre-trimmed and specifically designed earlier for my forehead, I'm going to place them on top. To apply these, I'm going to just use more liquid latex, which is thin, not thick, because I needed it to dry nice and quick. I'm going to press that down and slightly cut the edges because I did make the prosthetic on a flat surface and make sure that's all glued down and curved perfectly. Once you've got that done, you will need to lightly blend out the edges and make it look cohesive. So I wanted to go with some sort of really upright and swept temple. This is going to really pull the face upwards and give it almost like an extended eyeshadow and eyeliner and brow bone. So once I've got that all blended out, I'm then going in with little fine details and just making sure everything is nice and smooth. But I'm going to cover this in glitter, so I'm not too stressed. I did want to add some gills as well. That's definitely a very important and creepy element for me. I made them with some cotton wool balls, as you guys can see, sculpted them out, and then let them dry. I let that dry for about 24 hours and then to remove it I'm taking some baby powder on a large fluffy brush and slowly peeling it from the outer edges inwards until it pops off from the center of the face. I did go ahead and cut this up into three movable pieces because you will need to obviously cut out the eyes, nose and mouth. 
to start out our makeup application and first taking the pore filler and applying that where I need it most, that's going to be a really good primer for our base. I'm then going to flatten down my eyebrows so they're nice and safe from all of the adhesives. So I'm using a non-toxic glue stick and then brushing them upwards. I'm sure you guys have seen me do this a million times. I repeated that step about five or six times until they were super flat. To apply the prosthetic today, I'm taking a skin safe adhesive on both my face and the actual piece itself. I'm going to let it get tacky and then press that down firmly once I've got it in place. And then just repeat that exact same step for all of the other prosthetic pieces like the cheekbones. I'm going to lightly tap it just to ensure that it's super sticky and then almost dry and then press those down firmly once they're all lined up. Now because I did cut these, I will need to blend them out into the face and I spent a really long time doing this so I'm going to quickly run through how I do it. Just with liquid latex and cotton wool balls, I started out with a q-tip and then moved on to a large ripped up bath sponge. And as you guys can see here, I'm really just trying to blend it down into the face so that it looks nice and even. And also I used a hairdryer set to cool to make sure that I could speed up the process. I wanted this look to be perfect so I spent a really long time blending out these and really building up the sides and shapes of the face. I went over the top and smoothed it out with my fingers and also stippled a lot more latex. To apply these little cute ears today, it's going to be quite simple but I'll show you how to make them first. Using a lightweight cardboard, this is just the back of a cereal box, I'm lightly mapping out the shape that I want for my ears. You will need to have little rectangles down both sides so they adhere to your face easier. And I really wanted to incorporate more of a prosthetic look, so to make them really raised and interesting, I'm going in with hot glue first. I went around and cut out the edges and really defined the points and the spikes to make them look a little bit better. And then I'm going in with liquid latex and cotton wool balls. It's really important not to skip this last step because I don't imagine that our makeup products will apply the exact same onto the hot glue. So it's really important to go in, sculpt them out a bit further and make them look a bit nicer. To apply them today, I'm just taking those same adhesives that we used earlier and then also some skin tape. You can get this from the chemist and it's for injuries and things like that. It has a really low tack so the glue doesn't harm your skin and you can peel it off without hurting yourself. I applied two layers of that straight down the sides of the face and then you will need to apply liquid latex over the top to blend it back in. This is the face completely done and stuck down before we move on to the painting process. I'm going to repeat the same steps on my neck with the adhesives. I did cut the scales up into smaller strips just because I wanted better movement on my neck. I lightly blended them out and sealed over the top of them with liquid latex and then to set it all down in place I'm taking the NYX HD powder and the large fluffy brush and just packing that on to make everything a little less anti-shine and also to give it better grip when we apply the paints. I'm taking the NYX Jumbo Pencil in Milk and also the NYX White Eyeshadow Base and applying that straight over the top of my lids. For the rest of the face today, because I haven't yet picked up the NYX SFX paints, I'm just taking a white cream paint and then applying that all over my highlight points. I'm going to be really pressing that down into the skin and then I'm going to start applying a teal colour over the top. This is going to be my mid-tone skin colour, so to say, for my mermaid. So I'm going to start lightly dabbing that in and applying that into the contours but slightly towards the center of the face. I'm going through and then lightly tapping that out with a brush to give it more of a stippled look because I wanted more of a seafoam texture. To apply my contour today, I'm taking a royal blue color and popping that in all the areas that I would like to recede and shade. Starting out with the gills, this is also gonna be the base color for my scales. I really imagined having deeper scales with an iridescent and holographic dust over the top and I definitely achieved that, but for now we're just going to be applying all of the contours and creating a lot of shape back into the face and really accentuating all of the prosthetic shapes that I have made. I'm going in and applying that down the center of the nose and the face and also blending out the ears to give it a really ombre effect. To finish off and proportion the face contour, I'm applying that up in a V shape underneath my chin and lip and then going back in and really contouring and ombreing out all of the ears and the gills just to give it more definition. I'm then taking a wood chip brush and lightly stippling a white paint over the top this is going to give a really nice highlighted seafoam effect. I did, as you can see, apply a fair bit on my face, but I went ahead and blended that out later. So I'm not really going to go into detail how I did it. I just lightly tapped it over the top. I'm then going to apply the rest of the mid-tone skin tone color of our mermaid all over my shoulder area. And then with that sponge, I'm going to lightly tap that over the tops of the scales. That saved me a lot of time defining them individually. To start out with the shading now and the eyeshadows, I'm taking the NYX hot blue color and applying that underneath my lash line and really just smoking that out. I'm then gonna take that on a fluffy brush through the crease and give myself a really nice nose contour as well. 
Then taking the hot black shadow on a large fluffy brush, I'm using that to further define and cut out those eyes. I went for more of a hollow lid, so I'm taking this and really defining the crease. I wanted to give a really round shape to the eyes with the contouring that I did, but I also wanted them to be quite swept upwards onto that brow bone. I'm then going to lightly pat some glitter on the top of my lid just to give it a little bit more interest and more of a sparkly glam look. I'm then going to take the NYX Jumbo Pencil in Milk and really tight line my waterline to give a super wide and doe-eyed effect. This is when it started to get super cute and I realised that I wasn't going to be a scary mermaid and siren but we just went with cute from here on out. I'm taking the NYX Gel Liner in Black and really defining it and giving myself a thick doe shaped eye and then going to deepen out those contours as well with that black shadow. Once I've got almost like a 60s inspired look, I'm taking the NYX white eyeliner and really defining the inner corners and dragging that through my lower lashes. To smoke out that lash line again, I'm just taking more of that blue shadow and focusing it on the inner corners, dragging it down onto the sides of the nose. I popped on a short but very thick pair of lashes to give that really doe-eyed effect yet again. I didn't want to go for something that was really wispy on the edges because it would kind of make it more cat eye shaped. For the lips today I'm taking a NYX Cosmic Metals and I'm really going to start dragging out the sides of my lips to make them a lot larger and extended than what they usually are. I'm also going to create an ombre effect with some black paint as well. To finally get that holographic iridescent look I'm taking this single shadow in the shade Mermaid and the matte setting spray. I'm going to apply that everywhere to give us a tacky base and then I'm going to start brushing that shadow over. This is the perfect colour because it's like a holographic green and blue tint. So I lightly popped that on the center of the lips. I really heavily applied it on the cheekbones and highlighted my nose tip as well. And also pretty much everywhere. So on the tips of my ears and also on the scales on my neck. I just wanted to go crazy with this. I then went in with the green roll-on glitter and applied that in some of the areas as well. That just brought a little bit of a different color to it. But I just, I love how this started to look. To really go in, I'm taking a hot black shadow on a large fluffy brush and this is going to be my final bomb contour. So I'm taking that all across my neck to make it look nice and slim. All on my jawline and even on a precise brush, I'm using that and brushing it upwards from my scales. So this mermaid has heaps of highlight going but she definitely needs glitter. I'm taking liquid latex and applying it around the border of the collar and then just really heavily packing on this loose glitter. It has lots of little and big pieces. I had every intention of just popping this on my inner corner and then I thought to myself that glitter freckles would be the absolute cutest thing. So I went in and packed a whole bunch of glitter on the center of my face and across the top of my nose and I feel like it just really made this look so much more iridescent. As you can see the glitter shifts from a green to a purple to a pink and it was just the perfect addition in my opinion. I'm just adding in some final touches with a little bit more shading and a lot more highlighter just to really tie in all of that glitter. This is the finished look. I went ahead and popped on a curly silver and grey wig and I also made a shell crown. I did have a quick clip of how I did it but I left it out of this video because it got very long and almost close to the time limit. But this is it guys. This is the finished look. I hope you really enjoyed my entry. I feel like looking at this now, comparing it to some of my other work in the past, throughout the Face Awards last year I just learned and grew so much as an artist and I really feel that this is proof in itself. Hoping that I can create some awesome content for you guys and bringing Team Bonnie back. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to leave a comment and a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to stick around and see what happens. Thanks for watching.